I believe investing in a prime lens is the best thing you can make for your photography and filmmaking career. Literally, I can live with one single prime lens on set, whether 20, 24, 35, 50, or 85 mm. However, buying your first prime lens is somehow critical. Which focal length you should consider and what if you get the other one instead? So technically there is no right or wrong choice here, it all depends on what you need and the style you're looking for. Because every prime lens has a unique look and feel that you cannot achieve with the other one. So in this video guys we'll test 4 major f1.8 prime lenses. 20, 35, 50 and 85mm. This video has been on my list for a long time, so today we'll check the difference in perspective and framing and what each focal length is best for. We'll test all these lenses in a photo shoot and in some video clips, so you get a clear idea of what each lens is capable to produce, and therefore you make up your mind as well. Omahi and let's get started. Although I'm using Sony camera and lenses, the same concept and results apply to all other camera brands, whether Canon, Nikon, uh, Panasonic, and so on. Uh, uh, and these prime lenses I'm using here are made for full frame sensors, so if you are an APS-C camera user, the same focal length will not look the same on your APS-C camera. For instance, a 35mm APS-C lens will be roughly equivalent to a 50mm on a full frame. So keep that in mind. Now let me show you some images and I want you to guess which one is which lens. Which one is 20, 35, 50 and 85 millimeter. And here is the result. Now let's see the difference between the four prime lenses we have here. 20, 35, 50 and 85 mm. See, each lens has a different look. Now starting with the 20 mm Prime f1.8. It's a beautiful wide angle lens with a decent shallow depth of field background. As you see, the 20 mm lens helps in telling a story by showing the environment around your subject. Now the 35 mm is a tighter focal length, however, it also displays some of the surroundings. A kind of 20mm but a little bit tighter. And what's more interesting is it can work for both wide and close ups while keeping the model face looking natural. Eventually, you cannot do that with a 20mm wide angle lens. The 50mm prime, on the other hand, is a medium telephoto lens. It's quite close to the 35mm view but with more compression and more shallow depth of field background. And finally, the 85mm image is no doubt a beautiful compressed composition. We have a huge separation between the subject and the surrounding. This focal lens offers you the opportunity to focus on your subject and get rid of the background. It works well on close-ups, medium, and full shots. And before continuing watching this video, I would like to introduce my Lightroom preset packs. Currently, we have three different packs for similar scenarios. In this video, I applied some of my presets to the review images. And if you like the mood and the style I'm using here, head off to omagamrawi.com slash store 
and get yours today. Back to the video. So in the coming comparison, we'll discuss the amount of bokeh and shallow depth of field background of each land. Here we have four images, 20, 35, 50, and 85 mm. All of them are at f1.8. Indeed, the 85 mm has the most amount of bokeh followed by 50, 35, and finally the 20 mm. Eventually, if you are a bokeh lover and you love making shallow depth of field background, the 85 is your guy. So if you are planning to get your first prime lens, each one of us has a different opinion. I might be interested in fashion, in portraiture, and someone else in corporate style. But if you are on budget, there is no doubt the 50mm prime is your best deal. Because you can get this guy at around $100 to $150, it depends on the brand. The 50mm is a medium telephoto lens and makes cool images along with a good background separation. But your guy here doesn't like the standard 50mm focal length. I see it too much a classic. So what other options we got? My personal recommendation if you want to get one single prime lens is to get the sweet spot. The 35mm prime for video and the 85mm for photography. The compression of the 85mm prime is so unique and outstanding. And because of the shallow depth of field background, the images look absolutely phenomenal. And the follow-up prime lens you should consider for photography is the 35mm. Why 35mm? Because at this focal length, you can make both wide and close-ups while keeping people face looking natural when they get close to the camera. As I mentioned, it's perfect for medium shots and wide shots when you need to show some of the surrounding as well. And what's more interesting is to have both the 35 and 85mm lenses in your kit. They work perfectly in any situation, regardless the subject. I love having both lenses on set at any shoot, any time. Eventually, the 20mm is the last lens you should consider to be as your first prime lens. Although I love this lens so much, it's not a major lens to have in your kit. So, the 20mm is more like a luxurious prime lens for professional use. And honestly, I never thought I would love this lens so much. Imagine the bokeh and shallow background with wide angle lens. I'm keeping this lens for good. Thank you so much for checking out this video guys. Thumbs up if you find this very helpful and if you learned something new. And if you are new here on the channel, we make camera gear reviews, so consider subscribing for more content like this one. This was Oma, and see you guys in another one.